Good morning to you, church. What a wonderful day God has given us. We want to thank God for that. We want to acknowledge the presence of God in our midst. Let us pray. Draw near to God, all you who long for faith, all those who strive to lead a godly life. Draw near to God, all who you believe, all who have proved your faithfulness. Draw near to God, all you who trust in the promises of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ for all. Draw near to God. Let us come together as we worship our Lord, remembering that it is only our God who gives us salvation. Father, be with us this morning as we are gathered here. In your name I pray. Amen. Let me do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I would ask um, Ben to come and read the word of God. Good, good morning, church. It's uh, great to be here again, reading the word of God to you guys and um, just loving this hot weather. It's so good that the uh, ice caps at Atherton uh, started to melt. Anyway, today I'll be reading Matthew... 16, 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Now we'll get Johnson back to share his message. Thanks, Johnson. Thank you, Ben, for the reading of the word of God. Uh, today, I've decided to share with you on its theme, what's in a name? What's in a name? Names define us. Our entire identity is caught up in the names we bear. Think about it. If a child is raised being called sweetie, good, beautiful, kind, that child will think of him or herself as sweetie, good, beautiful, and kind. If a child is raised being called worthless, stupid, ugly, or bad, that child will begin to think of him or yourself as worthless, stupid, bad, or ugly. Bullies, on the other hand, have the ability to wreak havoc on the human spirit simply by employing words such as baby, idiot, coward, retarded, or whore. In fact, we shudder when we hear some of those words slang at others, even if we weren't bullied ourselves. So the words themselves carry difficult association for us, and they create in us a cringe effect. We not only identify with the names placed upon us, but we live out of those names. If we feel badly about ourselves, we begin to doubt ourselves. 
If you feel empowered, we can accomplish far more than we can ever thought we could. Sometimes for a particular purpose, names will change or a person might be given any additional name. The scriptures are filled with names that bear special Hebrew meanings. In, in several cases, God bestows a special name on someone who will take on a very special role in their faith. One of those is Abraham. Abraham's name is expanded to the Hebrew, Hamon, meaning man or a multitude. Abraham will be the father of multitude. God gives him a name to which he can attach his identity and therefore his mission. Abraham leaves out that name and that of Sarah possibly contentious to Sarah. Princess in Genesis 17 verse 5, 6, 15 and 16. While dying, Rachel called a newborn son Ben Onin, meaning son of my morning. But a bereaved husband, Jacob, chose to name him Benjamin, son of the right hand, in Genesis 35, verse 16 and 18. Jacob's transformation to covenant bearer after his struggle with his conscience over what he, he did to his brother, Esau, marked by his new name, Israel, one who struggled and prevailed, in Genesis 32, verse 28. So this change in name was a token of God's blessing, and was later confirmed in Genesis 35, verse 10. Evidently, therefore, when the scriptures prophetically speak of a new name, the reference is to a name that would appropriately represent its bearer. At times, new names were given to persons elevated to high government positions or to those to whom special privileges were extended. Since such names were bestowed by superiors, the name change might signify that the bearer of the new name was subject to its giver. Subsequent to his becoming Egypt's food administrator, Joseph was called Zatheneth Pene in Genesis 41, verse 4 to 45. Pharaoh Necho, when constituting Eliakim as vassal king of Judah, changed his name to Joachim in 2 Kings 23, verse 34. So likewise, Nebuchadnezzar, in making Matania his vessel, changed his name to the Decay. 2 Kings 24, verse 17. Daniel and his three companions, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, were given Babylonian names after being selected for special training in Babylon, in Daniel 1, verse 3 to 7. In our gospel for today, Jesus is bestowing a new name upon his disciple, Simon, son of Jonah. His name Peter, meaning stone. The phrase Jesus used to describe Peter's mission is a brilliant wordplay. In fact, you are Kephas, Petros. And on this Kephas, that is Petra, I'll build my ecclesia, church. So the Aramic, Kephas means rock. In Greek, this translates to Petros, masculine. Petra, feminine. Jesus is calling Peter a rock, referring to his faith, his character, and his rock-solid reality to Jesus, as he just demonstrated by calling him the son of the living God. So upon this foundation stone, or a rock, the movement would be built, an ecclesia, or the gathering of the faithful ones, the living stones built upon the cornerstone, Jesus himself. The church of God will be built upon him. So in giving Peter this name, Jesus is not merely rewarding him for giving the right answer, however. But Jesus is giving Peter a new identity as the disciple equipped to carry on the faith of the way. So Peter, or Simon Peter, as we call him, was one of the most impetuous disciples. Quick to anger, impulsive at times, fearful, doubting at others, obstinate and outspoken. This fisherman was also extremely loyal to Jesus, even to a fault. He had many flaws, as we saw in his denying of Jesus during his trials. And yet Jesus needed him to be able to carry on the mission and build believers after his impending death. So he needed to empower Peter. Calling Simon a rock, bedrock, or foundation rock, was like instilling him in the courage 
the strength and the optimism that he had the character to handle the job of early church founder and leader. So I imagine that when Jesus bestowed his name upon him, Peter must have been feeling that Jesus believed in him. Even though he himself felt that he had failed many, many times, he believed that Jesus believed in him and he called him, Peter, on you I will build my chain. So Peter is a confidence building name for a man who would need to have a lot of endurance, confidence, stability and obstinance and permanence. In his naming, Peter's step up and be transformed from mere disciple to value the story of the faith. Think of the names that you bear upon your heart and soul. I'm not just talking about your first name or your last name. But what are the names you have been called by parents, siblings, friends, neighbors, colleagues, and others in your life? What names have clung to you and become part of who you are, part of your core identity? What names do you brand upon your own person? Name those names that cling to you like branches now in your mind. In my culture, that is in Shona of Zimbabwe, traditional names were also given to express a parent or a family circumstance or feelings regarding the neighborhood and the community they live in. For example, Zikamai. Zikamai means settle down. The name is given to express the idea of settling down, not jumping from one relationship to another or one project to another. It's a name given to a child. Nagaite, what did I do? This name is an expression of regret by a parent, usually given by a single mother whose partner does not take responsibility of child which has been born. Simbaraishe means power of God in Shona. Tirivashe means we belong to the Lord. This is a Christian name for believers declaring their loyalty to God. So that don't disturb them. They've moved away from the traditions of their culture. And now they say, Tirivaishe, we are under God's loyalty. If you have had many loving names placed upon you, no doubt you are feeling good right now. But many of us unknowingly carry with us many false names. Names that have been foisted upon us by others. Names we have placed upon ourselves. Critics, judgments, labels, names that have injured our souls. We are carrying those names. And sometimes it disturbs us because these names are now becoming a barrier to our destiny. I want you to take a moment and think of those names. If you would like, you can write them on a piece of paper. Or you can say them out loud. Or you can simply bring them to the surface in your mind. How do they make you feel? Now I want you to hear Jesus' words for you. As told to, Peter, to us by Peter himself. 1 Peter 2 verse 5. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Offering spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God and through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, See, I lay in Zion a new a stone, a chosen precious cornerstone, and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. So who are we? Precious stones. Living stones. Or Paul's ways to the Galatian church, you are also sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who were baptized in Christ, you have clothed yourself with Christ. Galatians 3 verse 26. So God has called all of you, living stones and sons and daughters. You are part of the spiritual house, a holy priesthood, and you are literally clothed in Christ. Now watch all of those former labels, judgments, and names fall away from you as you take on God's mantle of blessing. All those names disappear. They will disappear. I'm holding this stone on your behalf. I'm holding it tightly in my fist. This stone represents your new name. 
You are a stone in the foundation of Christ's holy church. Every stone is precious. Every stone is important. Every stone fits with the ones around it and works with those around it to form the foundation of earth. Every stone is unique. No shape is exactly the same. And yet every stone is beautiful. You are beautiful because you are a son or a daughter of God. No matter the names that we, which were said upon you, those let names have no power over you because you are a child of God. You are a new person. Now, may the peace that all pass, passes all understanding with you now and always continuously remind you that you are precious before God. You are not a nobody. The name that you were given by your parents, the names that you were given to you, those names should fall off. Why? Because they put now a new name. The new name that is named after Jesus Christ himself. You are a Christian. Little Christ. You are a Christian. That name is new. That, man, that name should make you proud. Because they put a new name. That is labeled after your maker. You are a Christian. And that is very important. All other names that have been given, they fall off. So live up to that name. So that the world may see that you have been called for a purpose. You are Peter. On this rock, I will build my church. You are a Christian. On this rock, the church of God will be built on you. You are the person to build the church of God. We are the people to build the church of God. So may God continue to help us understand who we are. That our names, the names we are being called with, we are now all being called Christians because we believe in Jesus Christ. And that name has got a great impact in the world we live. People should know who we are. We are not ordinary people. We are not just anyone. We are extraordinary people who live by the name Jesus Christ. Who live by the name Christians after Jesus Christ. May the good Lord bless you as you continue to live up to the name that you have been called to. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. Father, we thank you. Father, when we encounter Jesus Christ, we'll never be the same. St. Paul urged Christian followers in Rome to, to present themselves as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed so that they might discern what is good and acceptable to God. We confess that we have not always taken care of our bodies, respecting them as we ought. We have not always taken the path that is right and has so often strayed. We have not always been motivated by love and goodness. Forgive us and transform us, Lord, that we will be better equipped to tell right from wrong. We are better equipped so that we represent you. So that when people see us, they will call us Christians because of what we do, because of how we live. Bless us, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I would urge you to take your offering and to bring it before you. I will pray with you over your offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. That we are here because of you. We thank you for everything that you have given us. All the material things. 
the cars that we are driving, the homes that we live, the fields that we plow. Father, we bring them before you. We want to say thank you, Lord, as we bring our offering before you, Lord, as a token of appreciation, of saying thank you for what you've done, what you've done to us during this week, what you've done to us in our places of work, what you've done to us in protecting us, Father, we bring our offering and we just want to say thank you. Bless this offering, Lord Jesus Christ. In your name I pray. Amen. Let me give grace. Father, we thank you as we come before you. Lord, your blessings be on each one of us. On every pastor, ministers, teachers, exhorters, leaders, and on those who give, and on those who are compassionate, those who are cheerfulness, it is an encouragement to us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.